So again, the, the session's being recorded. Um, the chat, I think, is going to be anonymized, so your your name shouldn't show up there. Um, it, it, pretty sure. So today I want to talk about writing R packages. If you have no interest in R or R packages at all, then um, I would recommend just like slipping out the back, but because um, this is all R today. R packages, you know, are a way of of distributing code and its documentation to people. It's been a real plus for for R. Um, I, I think R packages have been have been um, really made R really useful. Without without the R packages and a and a distribution system for them, then R would not have taken off in the same way that it has. You know, in Python, you can you can distribute code and software. I mean, code and in documentation in a much easier way. You know, with a Python module, which is just Python in a file you know, a bunch of function definitions in a file, basically, um, with doc strings as the documentation. You can, um, you, there are also larger Python packages that might incorporate C++ or C or, and, and multiple different files that um, is maybe more similar to these R packages. But I want to talk about R packages today. And again, if you have questions as I go along, um, write them in the chat or raise your hand uh, virtually, which is the little guy with the raised hand that's in the, in the middle of the screen at the bottom. So why write an R package? Um, I, I think I mean, the main purpose to write an R package is if you want to distribute, if you have a set of code that does something useful and you want to distribute it and its documentation. I still see people um, just posting scripts, R scripts on the web um, that, you know, is as their code. Distributing it as a, as a package with documentation would make everyone's life a lot easier. It's a lot easier to um, make use of things in the context of this package. I, I think also packages, R packages are useful just to keep track of the various miscellaneous R functions that you write just for your own use. So even if you're not going to distribute those functions to anyone else at all, it is worthwhile constructing a package um, basically as a way to that you can access that code, those, you know, those functions from any place um, on your computer without having to remember where was the script and what did I call it and how do I source it. Um, but also you can move to distributing it to other people later if you, f if you think they're going to find it useful. Um, our packages are also useful just to distribute data and software that accompanying a paper. So if you want, you have a paper that you've written, um, and you, you want to make the code in the paper and the data that was used easily accessible, R packages are a great way to do that. The, the, and, you know, the, the key thing here really, I would say, is the whole reuse. Um, that, that when you, that our functions sitting in some script somewhere are not as easy to reuse because you have to find the script and source it into R as if they're constructed in the form of a, one of the of a package. The R packages um, have some. I mean, fundamentally, it's relatively simple. It's a set of R code and some documentation, but in practice, it's it, the rules for making these R packages has is, can be quite arcane. A lot of little um, painful points. This um, writing R extensions document that is on the R website is kind of the key source for for the the details of how to make an R package. And I think if you know if you're getting into R packages that you want to distribute widely, then 
at some point you're going to need to read this big manual. But I would recommend putting that time off as far into the future as you can um, because it's really just very boring reading and full of like all possible details so covering every possible case you might ever want and not really focusing on the key bits. Um, what I'm going to do today is, is really show you the key bits um, and then um, you know in the first half showing you on these slides and then in the second half I will construct an R package live in our studio. The, on the on the course website, I put some resources that point to um, you know Hadley Wickham has a book about R packages that is free online, or you can buy a paper copy if you want. Um, I have a tutorial on R packages, and there are um, several other tutorials on R packages. But um, so I want to start first with just a simple example of an R package. This R Skittle Brewer. I think it's a, it serves as a good example both of like there's not a whole lot here and it is the, what's there is really made much more useful when assembled as an R package that you can give to people. So this um, Elisa Frazy, she wrote a little R, R you know, couple of R functions to um, basically have color pal palettes based on this popular candy in the U.S., Skittles. Um, and that's really all there is to this, this um, package is um, it defines a couple color palettes, just a vectors of colors that are corresponding to the proximate colors of Skittles candies. Um, and also a function to plot those just to I mean just to visualize what those um, color palettes are. And I mean, especially from a, a package that Hadley Wickham wrote, this dev tools package we'll see more about later. Um, it's really easy to install this package straight from GitHub. So if you make an R package and you put it on GitHub, it's really easy for someone to install it directly into R. Um, and that then is a, a simple way for them to make use of these um, color palettes. But if you if you go to if you go to her GitHub page um, or the GitHub repository for this particular package, you'll find that um, it's you know an R. An R package is basically a directory that has an R subdirectory with the R code, a man subdirectory with um, with the documentation of that R code, and then there's a description file and a namespace file that we'll get into. So an R package is really a directory that has code and documentation in a particularly structured way and a description file that says what the um, says what the package is, gives some details about it. So the the description file um, ha is you know has some very you know has a very specific format that is kind of a key value sort of set of key value pairs of um, and the, the keys are very specific, but you know, you, you say this is a package and this is its name. The you you have to give it a version number and you have to give specify both an author and a maintainer. And the maintainer ideally give also a an email address, a title that's sort of spelled out, um, and a description of what the package does. You can include a URL. You need a license, and we'll come back to this rest of this. But basically, the description file describes the package. It has to have this particular form. One way to one way I mean one way to create it is basically just to um, copy it over from another package. But we'll we'll see more about that later. There's some um, R packages that help you to to create this thing. And the namespace file is um, basically a system for 
preventing different packages from stepping on each other's toes name wise. So the namespace file has these this R code that specifies which functions in the package are really going to be accessible to the user versus all the other fu you might have other functions in the package that are not accessible to the user but are just used internally. I find these namespace namespace files kind of painful, um, but it, it basically is a, a way to just expose only certain functions from the package so that other packages don't different packages don't run into each other. Um, the the R code it is really just, would generally just be a series of function definitions. The um, the documentation is more interesting or maybe more of a pain. Um, the documentation has to be in these .rd for R documentation files. And the, the format for this is this LaTeX-like format where you have backslash some, I mean, this is again sort of like syntax highlighting. Um, it's painful to construct, but as we'll see, we don't actually have to construct it this way directly. Noah, you have a question. Yeah, um, with the namespace files, um, is the alternative that all the function names are accessible or none of them are? If you, if you don't have a namespace file, you, you won't be able to load the package at all, I think. It's sort of it's a requirement now of our packages. There is a, I'll show you later how to construct it. So there's a default that just exports all, all functions in the package. Um, if, if the if the namespace file is empty, then I think it just gets exported, and so you don't have access to any of the functions. But um, we'll see in a moment how uh, an an easier way than creating you, that we end up not creating the namespace file directly, but we use a, a different system to help us to get that. So this isn't managing like. Um, I guess I'm, so this isn't concerning like how you call an R function where you can call it just by name or you would have to call it by like the name of the package, colon, colon, the name of the function. That's not what this is managing. Yeah. It, it is managing that in a way. So, um, the, the, If you if you load the function with library, then all the function. I mean, if you load the package with the library function, then all of these exported functions you can you can call directly without referring to the name of the package. The colon colon operator you use and use without loading the package, you can get directly to these exported functions. There are internal functions in the package that you aren't able to get to except with a with using three colons. Got it. Okay. So so in our package we have this description file that describes the R package, who wrote it, what's the name of the package. We have an R subdirectory that has a, a bunch of R scripts that define functions. Um, we have, and they have a man subdirectory that has these documentations that for every, f every function describes the function, shows how it's used, explains each argument to the function, explains what the output is, I, gives examples of the function in use, and may link out to other, other functions. This, you know, back in the day, our, we would have to write this directly by hand, but in this today we use um, we use the, this package Roxygen that um, that will drive those. Um, 
but I, I haven't, I, I, before I talk about Roxygen, I'm going to talk about building, installing, and checking packages. So that, I mean, uh, you, if, you, if you have a directory like that, that has R code, that has the, the documentation, that has that description file, and has that namespace file, and at the command line, you can type R command build, R skittle brewer, you know, the, 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 the subdirectory where you have that stuff, and it will create this um, R skittle brewer, the version of .tar.gz, that is the R package itself. So if you email that to someone else, they would be able to install it as they wish. And the way they would install it was with this R command install R skittle brewer. It's important also to use this R command check R skittle brewer that um, that will run a series of checks to make to give you warnings or other errors about whether you have the R package set up correctly. Um, that R command check can also have this flag dot, dash dash as dash cran that runs further checks. Cran is this comprehensive R archive network, it's sort of the repository for a for our packages. To get a package on CRAN, they are more stringent about making sure that the package is in good form. And that this will run some further checks that they would run if, the, if you were to submit it to CRAN. You can, so if you do run our command install, it tries to install it in some um, official place which you may not have write access to on your computer. So me, I will usually do r command install and then minus minus library tilde r libs. So I'll install all of my r packages in this subdirectory on my system. And I, I create this dot r environment file that has r libs equals tilde slash r libs. That will make sure that when I open r and um, that R will look there for packages. The, the R command install is sort of specific for, well, they, I mean, the, the build and install are for, for Unix, really. On Windows, if you do R command install minus minus build and then the package name, it will create a an R binary, I mean, a, a .zip file, which is sort of the, the compiled version of the package on, on Windows. You know, I do, I tend to still do all this stuff directly at the command line, but um, more modern people will use this DevTools package from Hadley Wickham, and you could do build and install and check all um, within R. You load the DevTools package and you could do build and install and check. And we'll look at that a little bit later. And so really the, the, the two main, I mean, R, the R, I mean, in our package, you have R code in an R subdirectory and this description file. Those are straightforward. The, the only, the painful parts are this namespace file and the documentation, the document, in this really complicated format. And this Roxygen package has made making that documentation really easy, um, or, well, much easier than it was before. Basically, before each, in your R code, preceding each function definition, you provide a comment in this very structured way, structured in two ways, one, I mean, uh, you know the number the number sign is is the comment symbol in R. You need to do number sign and apostrophe, or the, you know the single quote, a series of lines like that, with which then give um, first the title of the function, a title for the function, um, the, a description for the function, and then at param various at um, sort of directives, at param says that I'm defining the parameters or the inputs of the function. So for each, each function input, you put at param, the name of the 
the name of the argument and then a description of that argument. Um, you use at return and a descript description of the return value for the function. And at export, this directive will say that this function should be exported for use by the user. So if you put this at export, then this function will get exported. The line will get added to that namespace file to export this function for use by the user. At examples and a series of lines that give examples of this R code as used. Ideally, also this at keywords using very R specific keywords about what the function does um, or I guess what category you would put the function in. Um, you can have some links to other functions. Here I'm doing, I think, exactly what's in the R code, but this has gotten improved more recently that you can put use markdown here instead of this code link business. Um, I'll show you that. I, I'll, I guess I can show you that in practice later. But the point is that um, if you learn this system of this Roxygen 2 comments, these structured comments, you put those before each um, function definition, and then you run um, the dev tools function document, it will search for all these structured comments and create the documentation and the namespace file for you. So then what we need to do to make an R package is we um, write our function definitions, we create this description file, and then we write, we document our functions in the code in this very structured way and use dev tools to, to create the ugly LaTeX-like um, our documentation for us. This, this particular package also has a make file that just has really one item. Basically, if I type make doc, it will run R and evaluate this particular bit of R, which is to call the dev tools function document and turn the those R, Roxygen documents documentation into the formal R documentation. Um, and that's just because I, um, this, the, you know, this was written by someone that, you know, likes make rather than running things within R. If you have a make file like that, then you also need this dot R build ignore file, which basically says, when you're constructing the R package, ignore that file. Don't include it in the package. It's some extraneous thing. Um, but that you can also include a readme file or a readme.md file. It really recommended to include a readme file um, that would say maybe explain to users how to you know explain to users what the what the package is about how they might install it and how they might use it. This is especially important for um, packages that you're putting on GitHub because kind of the readme or the readme.md file is sort of like the web page for the, for the package um, in the GitHub repository. So it, including a readme file is always a good idea. Um, but that, that's basically it for an R package. That's what we need. Um, R scripts in the R subdirectory, a description file. Um, if on our R scripts, we add this documentation in this Roxygen format, these sort of structured comments, then we use the dev tools document um, function and it will create the rest of the documentation and the, the, the ugly documentation and the, and the namespace file for us. Um, there's a lot of other stuff you can do. Um, including package vignettes, sort of basically you, you know, tuto short tutorials that show you how to use a package. Uh, in R, they call them vignettes, um, but it, it's really, I would call it a tutorial. My experience with R packages are that 
with well really all software users first would look I mean they're looking at the examples that you give them and they second really want to see kind of activity oriented documentation like a tutorial that's showing you how to use the package in context vignettes are the way to do that it's it's simplest to use R markdown for this I recommend using R markdown for this I'll show you an example later um, there are some the, there's a, a bit of extra gunk that you have to put at the top um, to get it to work as a vignette, and then you, you'll always want to load your package in your vignette. And if you have a vignette that's using R Markdown, you'll want to add to the description file um, suggests knitter and R markdown and this vignette builder knitter. This suggests part of the description file is saying that the package really to be fully useful needs these two packages installed. And the vignette builder is saying that there are vignettes in here and they're written in R markdown. You use, need to use knitter to construct them. Um, if you have a package with with a vignette, um, you can load it from. You, you can open that vignette from within R with vignette package equals R Skittle Brewer, or the name of that. I mean, well, this first line. This will show you. It'll give you a list of which vignettes that package has, and the same function is used to just load the vignette to 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 read. Um, there are all kinds of other optional stuff you can add. You can you can put a news or a news.md file in there to, to describe the changes that you've made to the package over time. You can include a citation file or other documentation in the package. You can include data within the package, usually in a data subdirectory. Use a source subdirectory that contains C and C++ or other sort of compiled code. Um, you can use a demo directory that has demonstrations that are like vignettes, but I don't think anybody does this anymore. And you can include a tests directory to run tests. Um, and I, th I think we'll look at that next week. Um, the, the main, the, I mean, there are two main tools that I recommend for for building and developing our packages. One is this package, DevTools. Um, and I just list here for your reference a bunch of the functions that you'll use in DevTools. Um, and the, the second main package is this, is this package, Use This, which... Um, is a, a package that sort of automates things that would otherwise be hard to remember. And I'm going to use that, I'm going to use the use this package to construct a package and do all these different things. We'll see this in action in a moment. But just in summary for this first part, our packages, I think, um, they don't have to be very hard. You need R code in an R subdirectory, a description file, and ideally also the documentation using this Roxygen um, format. And R packages are really useful, even if it's just for your own, organizing just your own personal functions, but it's also useful for distributing software and data, maybe organizing the code for a paper, distributing those to other people. Um, having the R package sitting on GitHub really makes it immediately accessible to everyone else. Um, and GitHub is also just really useful for you find other people's packages on GitHub and you see what it you know how it is that they did the things that they did. Now I'm going to switch now to R Studio and um, try to sh um, show this in the the construction of an R package in practice. And I I. On the course webpage, I put um, an HTML file. There's an HTML, a link to an HTML file that that shows 
what I'm doing here. Um, so if you if you go there, you'll see um, all the things that I'm that I'm. You'll you'll see you know statically all the things that I'm going to show you live. Um, and please raise your hand if you have any any if if this isn't if you can't tell what I'm doing or if you have any other questions. So I've opened our studio and I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is load this, use this package. Of course, if, if I didn't have it, I would, in, I could install it like this install dot packages, use this. That would be the way to install it, but I installed it previously. I'm going to load it first it, to create a package. I use a function in there called create package. And I give it the name of a directory. So the package is going to sit in some directory. And I'm going to um, tell it create package, give it the directory name that I want this new package to sit. So that, that directory doesn't currently exist on my system. I'm going to create it. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm writing an R package that simulates Brownian motion. So I'm calling it sim brm for simulating Brownian motion. It'll have, I, well, I mean, the, the first thing to do to make a package is first, like, write the functions that you're going to put in the package, which I've already done. Um, assuming that I've written a couple of functions that I want to put into a package, I jump to this, use this, create package to actually start work and turn it, putting those functions into a formal package. Um, what, so when I run this function, the, f it does all this stuff really fast and opens up another copy of our studio that is it. So it creates, um, it creates that directory on my desktop, sim brm. It, it, sets that as the active R project in R Studio, the sort of R Studio project. It creates the R subdirectory and it creates this description file. Um, it just basically dumps a bunch of junk in there. It creates a namespace file. Um, it creates this R project file so that that folder is a real R Studio project. Um, it adds that R project thing to the dot git ignore file. I guess, um, and it it adds that stuff to R build ignore. So these R project files would not be included in the proper R package, and then it opens a new R Studio session um, with that project as the active session. It does all that super fast. So what I notice on my screen is just it opens up our studio a second time sort of clean. Um, so I really don't want this version of our studio anymore. I need to jump to that other one. So I'm going to do a quit here, dump that guy, and then I'm going to go back to sharing my application again, and I'm going to share the, the other our studio that got opened. Okay. So, this is our studio again, but it's got it's sitting in that new directory it contained, and it created all of these um, it created all these files in that directory. The namespace file here has um, this export pattern. So th this this sort of default namespace here is. Um, what would export all functions in this package. So it's sort of corresponding to the question earlier, this, this namespace, I mean, this namespace file is sort of the default one to use if you want to just export everything. So it created this description file that has um, just sort of all default stuff that I'm going to want to edit. It made an R subdirectory, but the R subdirectory is completely blank. Okay, so the, the, f 
the first thing I want to do is make this thing a Git repository. So I want to do, if, if I were working on the command line, I would do, I would go into that directory and do git init to make it a Git repository. With this use this package, I can just say use underscore Git, and it will ask me some questions. It'll say, um, it, I think it went ahead and made it a Git repository, and it asked me, do you want to go ahead and, and add all this stuff, just add everything to the, to the Git repository? And I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, go ahead and do that. So it gives you choices, not now, yeah, nope. Um, the choices get randomized each time, I think, so you have to really read what the choices are, but we're going to commit all those. It says, and then it says, um, it committed that stuff with initial commit as the message, and it says it wants to restart our studio. Should I do that? No, absolutely. I want absolutely. Let's restart our studio. So our studio gets rerun, and the main change is that up here, up here, there's this Git tab shows up, which is the way that within our studio I can interact with this package. Um, okay, so I created this subdirectory. I made it a Git repository. The next thing I'm going to do is, is um, edit that description file. So I guess I already have it open up here. I'm going to edit the description file to get it um, the, to fill out this junk with the actual. Noah, you have a question. Sorry, never mind. I, I... I just missed the last command, but I, it's in here. It's in your phone, so I got it. Okay. So, right. So I'm going to give it a title. The title will be Simulate Brownian Motion. R really wants you to do title case for the title, meaning that you have um, each word has a capital letter. I don't really like this method of version numbers. It's too many numbers, so I'm just going to call it version 0 0.1. Um, so the, the authors here are specified within this more complicated structured way. That's what, what everyone likes to have now is rather than just have text to have structured information. Um, so I'll make use of that here. Put my email address. Um, so this authors at R um, with a bit, you know, describes who the authors are with this complicated R code. Um, just sort of go with it and fill in the best you can. We'll also give this a, a description, simulate and plot Brownian motion. That for the description, it wants to have full sentences, meaning start with a capital letter, end with a period. We'll save this. So I edited the description file. Um, I'll then go back to this Git tab. I'm going to click Stage and Commit. So I'm going to commit the changes I made. It will, of course, open a window that you can't see. Um, <laughs> uh, well. Yeah. Let me share the window that is hidden. So it opens up this window that that shows you the diff, what I changed down here, and allows you to put a commit message, edited the description file, and I can click commit and um, Go, now I'll go back to the RStudio window again. So I created the subdirectory, 
with create package. I made it a Git repository, and then now I've edited the description file. Um, I can use this. Well, the, I guess the, the next thing I'm going to do is put it on GitHub. There's a function, use GitHub, that will, um, has, I mean, that from R here, I can connect to my GitHub account and um, create a repository there and then push everything locally up to GitHub. I can do that with one command. The very first time you do this, um, it gives you an error message. It says, setting, um, it says error, no GitHub auth token is available. Use browse GitHub token for help storing a token as an environmental variable. So if I want to, if I want to sort of programmatically push my project to, you know, create a repository on GitHub, I need to have one of these like personal tokens set up on the GitHub website. So to do that, I do browse GitHub token. If I do what it says here, it will, it opens a browser somewhere. Guess I gotta share that now. Um, Switch, so it it will open up my web browser and log me into GitHub, and it opens up in settings, developer settings, this personal access tokens, and it um, cre it fills out this form for me, our GitHub pattern. Um, it fills out this form for me. If I go down, slide down and say generate token, it'll say, um, it gives me an error message that I've already have that token. I need, because I, I've already, I'm really connected to GitHub already, but it will, let's give it a different name just as a demo. Um, generate token. It'll generate this token a, you know, long string of characters. I want to, I want to copy that because I'm going to put it locally somewhere. Um, but I'm actually going to delete it here because I don't want anyone to know about this. But we'll pretend that I didn't. We'll pretend I copied it onto my clipboard. I'm now going to go back to. R Studio. It said, store your pattern with a line like this in your R environment file. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to follow the, what I want to do is open my R environment file. Use, um, um, edit R environment, if I type that, it'll open up this R environment file over here. And I, what I want to do is have this thing that I just copied in principle, that long set of letters, I want to put it right here and then save it. Um, and then behind the scenes, I'm actually going to behind the scenes, I'm going to copy that R environment file with my real version that has my own GitHub pattern in there. The point of all that was, um, if I want, I mean, it would be nice to be able to, within our create an, a, a repository on GitHub so that I could push everything there. And this GitHub token allows me to do that. If I, um, 
follow the instructions here, which was browse GitHub token, takes me to GitHub, makes that token. I then do this edit our environ file and edit that file that have the paste that token in there. Now I should be able to type use GitHub. I may need to restart R. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to the session and I'm there's a restart R. Okay, so now if I type that use GitHub, it tells me I'm gonna use SSH. Um and it 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 gets me to where I can um create the repository on GitHub automatically. Are the title and description okay? Yep. So now it has gone to GitHub and created this GitHub repository and it has added links in my description file to the GitHub repository and then pushed everything to GitHub. So if I look at my description file now, it added the URL on GitHub. And um, you all can go, if you go to that URL on in your web browser, you'll find that um, the, the it, exactly this stuff exists. So I guess let's do that. Um, So I'm going to share my web browser. So if I go to GitHub, kbroman, sim, brm, or sim, brm, that is what I just dumped there. So it has this description file. Um, I guess it has the previous version of that description file. It doesn't have the R directory because there wasn't anything in there, but um, I was able to automatically push everything to GitHub without, um, I mean, just from within R, which I think is, it, it had those extra steps that you had to do, but once you've done that, it um, is, is really useful. So going back to R Studio. Um, so it made the Git, it made the GitHub repository for me, pushed everything there, um, and it made these these just to the description files. So I'm going to stage and commit those changes. Um, behind the scenes, I'm writing a commit message of at add GitHub URLs to description. Um, and then. I can also push it to GitHub, I think. I press that button and that that commit that I just made gets pushed to GitHub. Um, so all of that, what have I done so far? I made the subdirectory with the repository. I edited the description file. I made it a GitHub, I mean, a Git and, and a GitHub repository, but I haven't really, I still don't actually have any code in here. Nevertheless, I could um, build this package. The DevTools function build, if I type that, it will build the package and make this tar gz file for me that's a proper package. I can install that. I can install the package. Um, and so having installed it, I could load it. Um, it's a package, it's a useless package because it doesn't contain anything except a description. Um, but I, I can also run a check on the package with this um, check function. So build, install, check, those are the key things. Check will run this long series of checks on the package, see whether it can install. It gives a, a warning 
it says that the license is not correct. Um, but otherwise, it's a perfectly fine package, just a useless one because it doesn't have any code. Um, we can add a license to it. Um, it wants a license. But there are two, well, there are a bunch of different kinds of licenses you can use. The, I generally choose between the MIT license and the, the, um, the GNU general public license, the GPL license. I use the GPL when I have to and the MIT when I can. Um, but I can, so I can edit the, the description file to use the MIT license with this, use this function, use underscore MIT underscore license, and then I need to specify my name. Um, I do that, and it, um, it adds license files and a license MD file, it adds a description, it, it edits the description file and then it also adds the license.md file to the R build ignore file. Um, so use MIT license does the, you know, a series of painful things to give it this MIT license. I can stage those and commit them. Add MIT license. And then I can um, I can push those to GitHub. Um, and now, if I run the check, I check in in parentheses. If I run that. It says it's a perfectly fine package you have here. It doesn't have any R code in it, but it's a perfectly fine package. Um, so let's put some actual R code in here. Um, I have a, um, I put, I made the R code sort of on my, if I go to my desktop, if I go to my desktop, I made an R, um, a dot r file that has the definition of two functions a simulation function and a plot function so I want to put that r code within my package I'm going to do that by using there's a there's a, a base r command file dot copy so I'm going to copy simbrm.r into the r subdirectory I previously wrote a couple R functions and I'm going to paste those into the package. So now if I go back into um, what happened here? <clears throat> I'm repeatedly having trouble figuring out whether to whether to click on my screen to the right that has the actual R Studio or to click on the screen that is our course. Um, I'm such an old man. Anyway, in the R directory, I now have this R code. Now, if I run if I run check on the package, it will say. It will, it will say some things about, I have undocumented code, and um, it'll, it has some other complaints. We'll, so we'll fix those by documenting the code. Um, but first, let's go ahead and stage and commit this change. And I'll I'll push it to GitHub. Um, okay, yeah. So the next thing is to add those R documentation that R documentation. 
So I, if I, I open the copy, the, the, if I open the R code within my R package, um, if I go into one of these function definitions, then I can, um, there's, there's a, a menu option. If I go to code on the menu, there's a menu option that you can't see, but is there called insert Roxygen skeleton. If I click, if I select that, it will add above the function definition, sort of the skeleton of the R of this Roxygen documentation that I want to add. Um, just as a reminder that, I mean, it gives me this at param and at param sigma that each function argument I want to give a little documentation to. So the previous documentation that I put up here, I'm going to paste down there within this Roxygen format. Um, so give it a title, describe the arguments, describe the output, it gave me this export thing, and then show it in action. I'm going to add an example of SimBRM1000. So this, this function does, um, you know, it gives you the number of steps of Brownian motion and the SD of the step size. It'll run a thousand steps of a 2D Brownian motion and, um, and return the output as, a, as an n by 2 matrix. So, I, that, so that I have one other function that would plot that output. Um, if, I, if, I, if I move down to, to that, um, so that I'm within that other function, I again go up to the, the code on the menu and then select insert Roxygen skeleton. It'll add this, um, you know, bit of Roxygen stuff. I can go back up here and edit that. Um, so giving a description to each of the arguments. Giving it a title. And explaining the return value, none here, and then adding an example. Use that other function and then plot it. And I'm going to commit. Add Roxygen um, documentation. And, and push it to GitHub. I guess I should have pointed out, um, you know, if I type install, These functions should now be available to me. I may need to restart R. So if I go to session, restart R. Oh, I, I need to type library sim brm. And now, I mean, these, these functions should be available to me now. That's what these functions do. It simulates this Brownian motion and the plot function just plots it, but puts a dot at the, it puts a dot at the start and at the end point of what I ran. Um, I don't know whether that's of interest to anyone, but, but that's my example package anyway. So, 
So, um, yeah, so the last thing, it, I mean, is to actually use those Roxygen comments and turn them into documentation. And I do that with this dev tools functions document. Type document in parentheses, and it looks through that R code and constructs um, these two documentation files. It and it and it it also um, edited that namespace file. In the namespace, it now has export plot brm and export sim brm. So document is the thing to turn those Roxygen comments I wrote into the actual documentation. So I'll now, I'll now go back here and stage all these and um, commit them. And I'll I'll push them to GitHub. So now if I do um, if I do build, it'll build the package and make this symbrm tar gz file. If I install It'll install the package on my system, and if I run check, it'll run these checks. So the, the checks give me a couple error messages, no visible global function definition for plot, for points, and for R norm. So that is, if I make, so these plot points, R norm, they're all making use of functions that are in, that are not part of, that are in some of the, the base R packages. Plot and points are in the graphics package, and R norm is in the stats package. So, um, What I, what I really need, <clears throat> I need to, that is another addition that I should make to these, um, to the Roxygen comments here, that for the plot function, I should write import from um, graphics, plot, and points. And then for the, for the simulation function, I should add import from stats R norm. And I should also say um, use package stats and use package graphics so those add um, to the name to the description file it added the description file now has um, these lines that say import stats and graphics and then I need to run document again and that edits the namespace file so that the namespace now has these import from things. Um, so that if, if your package makes use of other people's packages, including sort of the base, the sort of the main R packages that are, that you would generally assume would be available, it wants you to, um, it wants you to tell it about that. Um, so I will um, commit those changes and push them to GitHub.
we have at this point, if I say, um, if I run check now, it should be without any errors. So it, so now our command check says zero errors, zero warnings, zero notes. We're all perfectly happy. Um, there were two more things that I wanted to do. I wanted to add a readme file, um, and I wanted to add a vignette, but we only have five minutes left. You can look at the, um, the, the little web page I made that's on, from the course web page and, and try it from there. Um, I'll stop now and, and answer any questions you have because we only have three minutes left. Do any of you have any questions I can answer? What questions do you have? The, <laughs> that example was supposed to show that our packages are really very easy to construct. Um, in practice, I think it showed that like um, there are a lot of little nitpicky things that you have to do to get an R package to work properly. It's not just, but it, once you've done so, you, I mean, anybody could install this package from their computer. You could say if you do dev tools install underscore GitHub, Kate Roman slash SimBRM, if that command would install both the R code and documentation on their computer to use as they wish. So there's all this structure that's around just two little function definitions, but it gives them documentation and the, the code itself in it, you know, in a simple way. So I will um, turn off the recording.